aircraft making a condensation trail is very similar in many ways to when you go outside on a cold day and exhale, you create a condensation trail. That little cloud is a condensation trail. Now, if you take a two-mile walk on a cold day, and you can turn around, and you can see your condensation trail tracking all the way back for two miles, that's how crazy it is to think that what we're looking in the sky is actually condensation trails. The contrails, not the chemical, the contrails occur because of cold air, minus 30. It takes a high altitude, around 30,000 feet plus. There's a carbon dioxide and water vapor in that exhaust. That turns to ice crystals, and that's what you see, the white stream behind it. Those white crystals of ice warm up, dissolve, and the smoke goes away. And it never lasts more than a minute. What we're seeing now, and I first could not believe it, and I started looking at the skies, and these are not normal. They're not natural. There's something going on. I don't know who it is or why they're doing it. All I can testify is it's not natural and it's not normal. Constant respiratory problems that are now epidemic. Is there any connection between this and the growing epidemic rates of other human diseases that are proven to be connected to highly toxic heavy metal exposure? Lab tests from around the globe have long since proven a mountain of heavy metals like aluminum, barium, and strontium are raining down on all of us. These metals are the primary elements named in climate engineering patents. Yes, this is connected to the dirty, dingy, often checkerboard striped toxic mess that we see in our skies day in and day out. If you don't believe it, it doesn't matter. You're still breathing this contamination with every breath, and it's building up in your body. Several dozen lab tests from Shasta and Siskiyou counties alone, about 70, I believe, prove this beyond any shadow of a doubt. Why aren't we being told? Why don't meteorologists and institutions like the Weather Channel say a word about climate engineering? Because they're owned by corporations like Blackstone and Bain Capital, corporations all connected to the umbilical of the global power structure. Does anyone believe the paid actors at the Weather Channel would tell the truth about climate engineering, knowing their jobs or perhaps much more depend on them saying whatever they're told to say? Perhaps we could ask Weather Channel meteorologist Nicholas Wilkin. Unfortunately, though, we can't because he died last month in what Fox News said was, quote, an apparent suicide. His car was crashed through an Atlanta parking garage and plowed into an adjacent hotel. That's a strange way to commit suicide. But perhaps let's ask the meteorologists at the National Weather Service or the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. But no again, because virtually all the National Weather Service and NOAA government employees are still under a federal gag order. Don't believe me, please investigate it for yourself. If you're willing to look at the truth, if you want to see meteorologists going to unimaginable lengths of lying to try and explain away the completely unprecedented and completely engineered weather scenarios that are now the norm, watch the Weather Channel for a while. Connect the dots. Watch the behavior of the Weather Channel actors as they give truly an ever more complex and implausible fabricated explanation for weather scenarios that are historically unprecedented and meteorologically impossible without the climate engineering factor. Again, we have engineered snowstorms happening in the West with the center of those storms, like one I mentioned last week, winter storm, quote, Kayla, the center of the low pressure of a, quote, winter storm pushing 80 degrees with tornadoes on the, quote, warm side of the storm. Where is our sense of reason? This is not normal.